Hi there, thanks for tuning into this video. My name is Shiv and I'll be presenting you today implementation of mathematical modeling in identifying calcium uptake pathways in cardiac mitochondria. This uh, project or this work was published last year in the Journal of Physiology uh, and was supported by the Virtual Physiological RAT project about which you can know more by going to this uh, website. Uh, I'd like to start off by explaining a few things about calcium signaling pathways and cardiac myocytes in particular. Uh, heart pumps the blood throughout our body. We know that. Uh, how does it contract? So there is an, uh, it's called a battery of the heart called the synovial nodes, which actually generate the force which propagates through the ventricles of the heart and makes the heart pump blood. So in response to this electrical potential that's generated in the synovial node, there's a surge of calcium that comes inside the myocyte, mostly inside the dyadic space. And from the dyadic space, the calcium basically diffuses to the myofilaments and to the mitochondria. And once it diffuses to the myofilaments, myofilaments generate force through uh, cyclic binding of myosin heads with the actin filament and make the heart contract. But in order to do so, it also consumes energy, and energy is met by uh, ATP hydrolysis, and ATP is produced by oxidative phosphorylation by the mitochondria. So cardiac mitochondria uh, makes ATPs uh, and takes up calcium. It was demonstrated more than uh, five de decades ago. Uh, and over this period of time, as you can see, a lot of more information has been accumulated and most of it is uh, that a mitochondrial calcium mini-porter, that's, that's what they call it, that's a channel, and that's basically responsible for uptake of calcium inside the mitochondria, but these, these are under experimental conditions. What, but what happens under physiological conditions when you have all the other ions also present, such as magnesium? So uh, there was a bunch of experiments done by AHA in 2013. And what he did was he isolated cardiac mitochondria and perturbed it with boluses, boluses of calcium chloride in the presence of different amounts of magnesium. And as you can see here, is that as you go on and increase magnesium, a significant calcium uptake is uh, inhibited. Most of, most of it is inhibited. Or you can see here that the, the, there are two components you can see. There's like a fast component and there's like a slow uptake phase. So the mostly the slow uptake phase is completely or most of it is inhibited. Well. So what does it suggest? Maybe there's another pathway that's uh, not inhibited or partially inhibited by magnesium and is rapid in characteristics. All right, so let's have a look. What That's what we did. We try to search and see what can be the possible candidate in the mitochondria. So there are two main candidates that I, I could think of. One was RAM, that is called the rapid uptake mode of calcium uptake. But it's been shown that it's... Uh, not at all inhibited by magnesium and the other one was random receptor recently shown to exist and has a calcium graded uptake response that's what we were looking for in those experiments and um, it has also been shown that this random receptor uh, is sensitive to magnesium its opening probability is decreased slightly and its adaptation phase is also adapt uh, its adaptation characteristics are also affected by magnesium all right, so that's the one. So uh, we look for, for for different mathematical models that's already present in literature, and a model by Kaiser and Levine was selected to be the one because it has a, a adaptation phenomenon in built in it that was required for our modeling. However, it did not have any magnesium inhibition. So what we did was we added a C2 dash state to which the model goes to when you add more and more magnesium and sort of inhibits the opening probability of random receptor. That's what we want. So here are a bunch of uh, model simulations showing how model basically uh, responds in uh, in when you add more and more magnesium in the system. So this is a step up response of calcium 
and these are the opening probabilities and here you can see uh, when you increase calcium you have higher opening probability and when you add more magnesium the rate of adaptation of the channel is affected and voila so as you can see here uh, the model the mitochondrial model is able to fit the data with that right and tap channel so we cannot say if there is a right hand receptor in the mitochondria however what we can say is from this demonstration that there was there there's a Rindine type channel that exists in mitochondria and is responsible for fast calcium uptake so it took us a bunch of parameters to explain this eight parameters were used to fit 30 independent experiments and we used genetic algorithm for parameter optimization and the model was implemented in MATLAB which you can get all the codes are available on this website on the virtual rat website um, so parameter estimation was done using those experiments done by AHA and we corroborated the model or validated the model using a different set of experiments which were done in the absence of, uh, in the absence of magnesium and this data set was modeled by the basal uh, model that was the basis of our model but uh, just note that basal model did not account for the random receptor that we added to simulate AHAS data. Uh, as you can see, this model, I mean the model that we developed, is uh, is able to simulate uh, blameyer uh data as well. So it sort of validates that the hypothesis that there are two different uh, sort of uptake modes uh, in mitochondria. Well, so what do we learn? So we learn that there are two different type of channels in the mitochondria possibly. One is kind of a slow calcium uptake pathway, that's the calcium mini porter. And another one is like the randine type channel, which is uh, the calcium graded uptake and partially inhibited by magnesium, that's the randine type channel. Further analysis of the model actually suggested that the mitochondria are smart. What I mean is that they they, they buffer differently calcium depending upon what the mode of uptake is. So it's just a theory, it's just a hypothesis. It needs to be validated uh, by further experiments, maybe in the future. All right, so that was the part of the paper, but here I'm gonna show you like uh, uh, like what the step up should be because it's, it, it's good that the mitochondrial model fits the data and things like that, but what do we do with that? So here um, I used uh, a tricing model, uh, which uh, uh, it's a human heart model, and I it does not have a realistic ventricular myocyte. So I plugged in a human ventricular myocyte in it, and further I inserted a myofilament model, which accounts for metabolite bindings and things like that. It's under review, and hopefully it will be published soon. And another model, that's the one that we just identified in the previous slides. I couple all these things together and see what happens when I knock out the right hand type channel, which I call MRYR here. Uh, so once you knock this channel out, you can see the calcium uptake is not much in the mitochondria and therefore you have a surplus of calcium in the, in the ventricular myocytes. All right, so what's the consequence of this? So as a result of this increased calcium, you can see there's a minute difference in, in the Frank Starling curve. What basically it shows you is that as the filling pressure increases, how the cardiac output changes of the heart. So your, your cardiac output is somewhere in between, as, as you can see, is that it's relatively unchanged. So bad news? I would say so because uh, as you can see in the, in, in the mitochondria the uptake in the absence of this fast uptake channel is significant and we are not accounting for it. What I mean is that mitochondria as I said is responsible for the production of ATP that provides the energy for contraction uh, of the heart and which I'm not accounting for like how, how is this calcium is affecting myocyte that's not been done here it's a work in progress and hopefully in the future we can see if it if there's an effect of uh, mitochondria and how 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 significant is that that's for later 
thanks thanks guys thanks so much for staying and listening up and if you have any questions uh, shoot a mail to me and hopefully we'll talk to you again later ciao